Boatworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boatworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all had a great and safe Labor Day weekend. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way right up front. I know that it's been a long time since I've had a video out. Well, quite a while, quite a while. And let me explain that. There's, there's, there's somewhat of a good reason for it. <laughs> now, if you remember, the, the, the next topic that I was going to be covering was going to be spraying all the smooth areas up on this boat, and which, which I've done, except when I was sitting down and, and starting to edit the video, I wasn't happy with everything that I had. It was just very boring. So I came up with a plan B, which I think is gonna work out really well. Now, as you can see, I still have a few small items here that I still need to finish glassing and, and paint. So my revised plan was to, okay, well, I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll be a lot easier for me to record this and, and kind of comment on how I'm mixing the paint, adjusting my spray gun, you know, air pressure, all that, all that good stuff while I'm doing these small areas, and then I can tie that video in with what I sprayed up on top. Sound good, right? Well, the problem is, as you can still see, I haven't gotten to them yet, and that's been the delay. Um, the owner's been able to come up, uh, you know, for the past couple of weekends, and since, you know, there's extra help here, I had to take advantage of that. So we switched gears on again, and we were focusing on getting the hardware back up on this boat, and we've made a lot of progress. So it was well worth it, but that also meant that I didn't get any content out, uh, you know, for anybody to see. So for this, for this video, I am going to leapfrog this spring, uh, the smooth areas, just because I, I want to get something out and I, I haven't gotten to these yet. So I'm going to leapfrog that for this week. And then in the next video, then we'll kind of jump backwards into the spring. And I think, it'll, I think it's going to work out really well. So for right now, let's get into this video, and it's going to be, well, I'll just, I'll let you wait and see, but I am going to be answering one of the most common questions that I got uh, when I was last doing this on a different project. So stick around, and I hope you enjoy the video. So the first coat I'm rolling out here is All Grips 545 Primer, and I, that stuff gets mixed one to one with the base and the catalyst, and I believe I reduced this about 5% using their T0006 epoxy thinner. Now, that thinner can only be used with their epoxy-based primers. You cannot use that thinner with any of their topside paints. It just, it'll turn it into cottage cheese. So last night I finished rolling out the 545 primer on the, the cabin top of this boat. And if you haven't gathered already, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to lay out all the non-skid on here. So I finished laying down this 545 around 6, I think it was like a little after 6 o'clock last night. And one of the, the, the deals with all grip, or you know with, uh, well I guess it's the same way with a lot of different paints, but with, uh, with all grip. If I'm able to come back within 24 hours of when I first applied this, I don't need to sand the, the primer before I can top coat it with my, uh, with my all grip. Um, it's, it'll become more of a, a chemical type of a bond instead of a mechanical bond you know, that you'd get if by, by sanding and, and etching the surface. Now, typically on a smooth surface, you can't get away with that because you, well, you, it, it wouldn't be smooth, <laughs> um, especially by rolling. But since this is non-skid, it doesn't matter because there is, there is so much texture and grit that's going to come in or that's going to be applied to this 
any little you know minor surface imperfection you, you will never see it you just you will flat out never see it if anything else it'll it'll kind of help to create uh, a little bit better of a of a of a non skid appearance i guess so that's that's the plan it's about 10 o'clock in the morning now the following day so i'm well within my 24 hour window and i think it's time to get this party started now if you remember a while back i did a video on applying non-skid and at that time i was doing it on a small little part i'll put a little pop-up window thing thingamajigger up in here and one of the most common questions i got from that video is if i still would recommend that particular non-skid additive that i that i used back in that video that was made by soft sand and well, I guess let's just, let's just see. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I've used that particular additive on four, four major projects. They were top to bottom restorations. And they were, they were for very, very discerning customers. And the, the, the texture that I get, I'm using medium grit, and that's what I've always used. Uh, but the texture that I get on here, it just, it's, it's perfect. It's just, it, it is. Um, it doesn't, it's not like sandpaper where it'll rip the, the skin off of your knees if you're crawling around on deck. Uh, but it gives you excellent footing. It's a, a pretty clean product to work with. I mean, it, it, the process is a little bit messy, you know, it, just, it is what it is, but it's, it's a very clean product to work with and it, and it works. It just, it works very, very well. So that's what I'm gonna be going with on this project as well. Now here, since all of this material is gonna be applied by roller, I, I'm using actual all grip, not all craft, but the actual all grip. And I believe the color uh, is clipper white. And for the catalyst and the thinner, I'm using their number three brushing catalyst as well as their T0031 brushing thinner. Now this stuff gets mixed two to one, you know, as far as base to catalyst. So I think here I'm having to guess somewhat because I can't read exactly how much I'm pouring out, but I'm, I'm guessing I'm pouring out about 16 ounces of the base or the clipper white all grip and then eight ounces of the catalyst, and then I think I'm gonna try and splash in, yeah, about three or four ounces of the thinner. And then give everything a real good stir for a couple of minutes, and it's time to roll it out. The type of roller that I use for applying the, the 545 as well as this all grip uh, base coat here, it's a, the, the roller itself is made by glass coater, well, actually, I think it's made by Corona, but it's it's called their glass coater with a K, and it's a seven inch, three eighths inch nap, and it just it works really well. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling out, say like a three by three or a four by four foot section, and then I'm coming back with just a real cheap disposable chip brush and just tipping it off. Now, because there's so much detail on this deck with all the different hatch uh, you know hatch openings and derailed boxes and mast step, and there's two companion ways here. I've got to break this deck into basically two halves so that I can still get the non or the, the non skid particles applied while the paint is still wet or before it flashes off. So here I've done the port side and just to make sure that I have enough material, I'm not going overboard quite yet. Now once I get the other half uh, you know pretty well coated and if I have enough extra material, then I'll come back and then you know fill in any of these uh, what appear to be you know kind of bare spots. But for right now, I'm trying to keep it as thin as I can. Uh, but still get all the coverage, but uh, I just want to make sure that I have enough material to actually finish this deck, you know, completely.
So as it turns out, I had plenty of the soft sand particles here. It, now it's the following day, and I'm just coming back with a little uh, floor sweep brush thing. And I'm, I'm basically uh, you know, sweeping all the excess that I laid down uh, yesterday into piles, and then I'm gonna be able to scoop that up and recover uh, you know, a good portion of this material. In total, I laid down, or I applied, I think it was five of those bottles. I don't know if they're pints or quarts, but in, in total, I applied five of those bottles but I was able to recover two of those bottles, you know, after, uh, you know, sc uh, sweeping it back together and scooping it into the bottle. So, you know, three bottles to do this entire deck and it's pretty good size. Uh, that's not bad, not bad at all. Now, granted, I did lay this material down very, very heavy uh, just because I wanted to make sure that I had every single square centimeter <laughs> covered in the non-skid, so. I applied way more than I needed, which is why the, you know, the, the top of the cabin here is such a uniform tan color. But if I had been a little bit more sparing on, uh, on how I applied it, I probably could have gotten away with just doing the three bottles and not have to scoop this up. But it, it's, you know, this stuff is so easy to, to recover, you know, why not? And just for good measure, just to make sure that I have all of the remaining loose material removed, going over with a vacuum and one of those little fuzzy nozzle brush head attachment things <laughs> attached to the vacuum here. And I'm just going over and sucking up anything that's, that was left behind from when I swept it. So with that done, now it's time to start mixing up the all grip and rolling that out. Just as before, I mixed up this all grip exactly the same way that I did last time. It's two to one, you know, for the, the base and the catalyst and then you know, you're mixing in your thinner. Now, the difference between this coat versus the previous coat is that this batch that I'm mixing up here is going to require a lot more material. On the, on the first coat that I applied before I put down this non-skid material, I, I think I rolled out a total of 28 ounces, and that was you know, with the base catalyst and the thinner. Now, for this first seal coat, I went through two quarts, actually a little bit more than two quarts. And then on my final seal coat, which will be you know tomorrow, then I'll actually go through a little bit less material. I think I only went through a little over a quart. But on this initial seal coat, uh, you, you need to be generous with the with the paint. You want to make sure that those particles get well saturated. So I did not record rolling out this second seal coat because, well, I, I think you get the idea. But so now it is the following day and I just finished rolling out that second coat. So now I'm gonna pull this tape right away. And actually, since we're working with the tape here now, that was actually a question that I got a little while ago. You know, someone was asking, well, how do I manage the, you know, the taping process between the different coats, uh, you know, between the primer and the seal coat and all, and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, the first strip of tape that I laid down was, I think it was like a 3 eighths or a half inch wide piece of fine line tape. That's that uh, really kind of a, almost a plasticky feeling tape. But it gives you, a, like the name implies, a real fine line uh, when you, when you uh, remove it. And then over top of that, I overlapped, I think it was like a one inch wide yellow tape just to give me a little extra, you know, wider border for when I'm rolling the material out. And... I laid that down uh, before I rolled out any of the primer and I left it there until you're seeing me pull it up here now. So I basically, I, I lay the tape down once and leave it until I'm done. Now this is presuming that I'm doing all of the priming and base coats and seal coats and everything in consecutive days. You know, I would not recommend trying to do that if you're going to be, you know, say laying the tape down and then taking it off for the week until you're able to come back that following weekend and then, you know, uh, move, start to move forward. By that time, the, 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 the sun would bake the tape right in the, right into the, in, onto the surface and you would not, you'd be picking it off in pieces. So as long as you're able to, you know, do, go through this process in consecutive days, I usually just lay the tape down once, you know, go about uh, whatever needs to get done and then pull it as soon as that last coat of paint is applied. So here, everything is still wet, but it seems to work pretty well. So, 
So as always, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please hit that little red subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. This has been a Bootworks Today Protection.